You're listening to AM Now, an Accounting Matters podcast. I'm Adam Olson. And I'm Nicole Harger. We're kicking off today covering the roller coaster the new SEC climate related disclosure rule has been on lately. As a recap, on March 6th, passing with a 3 2 vote, the SEC formally adopted the final climate related disclosure rules. Commissioners Peirce and Uada dissented, while Commissioners Crenshaw, Lazarga, and Chair Gensler supported the final rules. In total, the commission received upwards of 24,000 public comments on this topic since 2022, even continuing to receive a flurry of comments in the final days leading up to the final vote. In response to such public comment, the final rules did differ from the proposed rules in a number of significant ways, granting new accommodations and excluding key items. A speculated due to widespread criticism around the lack of data availability and the undue burden of compliance, the final rules entirely omit the proposed disclosure requirements of scope three greenhouse gas emissions. Even further, the final rule established a materiality threshold for disclosing scope one and scope two emissions and provided an an accommodation allowing the disclosure and accompanying attestation of such information to be filed on a delayed basis due by the second 10Q filing each year. In the final rules, the commission also retained the proposed expenditure disclosures and despite criticism, the low 1% materiality threshold subject to certain de minimis thresholds as well. These disclosures will be required by Regulation SX and thus will be included in the consolidated financial statements, making them subject to annual audits as well as compliance with internal controls over financial reporting. However, the final rules eliminated the requirement to disclose climate-related financial statement metrics in the financial statements on a line-item by line-item basis. The final rules lengthen the overall compliance timeline and provide several accommodations depending on a registrant's filer status. For large accelerated filers, most disclosures under Regulation SK and SX will be due starting in 2025, with some phased in starting in 2026. GHG emission disclosures will be due starting in 2026, with limited assurance required in 2029, and reasonable assurance not required until 2033. For accelerated filers, the compliance timeline is postponed by one year except GHG emission disclosures are not due until 2028, with limit assurance not required until 2031. Accelerated filers are not required to obtain reasonable assurance. The compliance timeline for SRCs, EGCs, and non-accelerated filers is postponed one year further until 2027, and these filers are entirely exempt from providing GHG emission disclosures. Yeah, and it didn't take long for challengers of the climate disclosure rule to file suits. Most notably, as of last Friday, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals judges granted a request for an administrative stay on the rule. The specific reason is not known. However, the order came after certain fracking companies filed a lawsuit. This is just one of many lawsuits that have already been filed against the SEC by various other groups, including several who say the SEC exceeded its authority with the climate-related disclosure rule, as well as those who say the SEC did not do enough with the final climate-related disclosure rule. The SEC stands behind their final rule and has committed defending their rule aggressively in the courts. So more to come on how this all shakes out. Yep, certainly there is. <laughs> um, moving along, last week, the Federal Accounting Standards Advisory Board released an exposure draft of a proposed technical bulletin, which would clarify existing standards for seized and forfeited digital assets. The existing standards provide guidance for seized and forfeited property, but clarification is needed regarding the unique characteristics of digital assets. The technical bulletin would clarify that reporting entities, with the exception of central bank digital currencies, should treat digital assets such as cryptocurrencies, stable coins, and non-fungible tokens as non-monetary property when applying the standards. It would also provide clarification on measuring market value and applying disclosure requirements. The proposed technical bulletin is open for public comment through April 18th. Speaking of public comment, the Financial Accounting Foundation is also asking for comments regarding the effectiveness of the Private Company Council, or PCC. The PCC is an advisory board that was formed in 2012 by the foundation to serve as an advisor to the FASB on private company matters. 
The PCC's main objective is to improve accounting standards for private companies by addressing their unique needs and circumstances. The foundation periodically reviews the effectiveness of the PCC by seeking input from stakeholders on how the PCC can be more effective in fulfilling its objectives. Comments on this must be submitted by May 31st of 2024. Next, we will discuss the recent court ruling that declared the Corporate Transparency Act, or CTA, as unconstitutional. The court's decision impacts millions of entities required to report beneficial ownership information. The CTA, passed with bipartisan support in 2021, aimed to combat money laundering, terrorism financing, and other illicit activities by mandating certain companies to disclose their beneficial ownership information to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, known as FinCEN. However, the court found that the act exceeded constitutional limits in that Congress lacked the jurisdiction to enact it under various constitutional provisions. In response to the ruling, FinCEN announced they will cease enforcement against the plaintiffs, including the National Small Business Association and its 65,000 members. However, this selective enforcement has stirred controversy with calls for clarity and consistency in application. The government is expected to appeal this decision. Meanwhile, the AICPA encourages small businesses to continue filing beneficial ownership information reports. Jumping to the IASB, it is proposing amendments to IFRS 3 business combinations in order to address feedback about sufficient and timely information about acquisitions and post-acquisition performance, as well as the balance between the risks and costs of providing useful information to investors. The main proposals include reporting the objectives and related performance targets of the most important acquisitions and disclosing the expected synergies for all material acquisitions. The IASB is also proposing amendments to IAS 36, impairment of assets, that would address the effectiveness and complexity of the impairment test. Comments will be accepted through July 15th. We started today's episode with the adoption of the SEC climate disclosure rule, and we'll end with another recent proposal by a government agency to take a significant step towards potentially implementing mandatory climate-related reporting requirements. The Canadian Sustainability Standards Board released proposed standards for companies to report sustainability and climate-related information, which largely aligned with the standards released by the ISSB. The proposed standards include modifications specific to Canadian companies, including later effective dates. The Canadian Sustainability Standards Board is seeking feedback on the proposed draft. The Canadian Securities Administration stated that it would consider the final standards when proposing its own climate-related disclosure rule. Canada's proposed IFRS-based sustainability reporting standards marks another step towards achieving global alignment on the importance of ESG reporting. And that rounds us out for this week. For a deeper dive into what's trending in accounting, finance, and sustainability reporting, check out our other podcast on the Accounting Matters feed on your preferred listening platform. Again, I'm Adam Olson. And I'm Nicole Harger. Thanks for listening to AM Now. We'll We'll see see you you next next week. week.